Welcome, this is Speaking of Settlements, I'm Scott Drake. The ripple effects of Standard & Poor's unprecedented downgrade of U.S. debt spread through the financial system this week with some of the nation's biggest life insurers, securities clearinghouses, and investment funds losing their AAA ratings. My guest is the host of Speaking of Settlements, Mark Wallstrom. Mark, good to see you. Welcome back. Scott, good to be here. I wish there was better news, but it is news, so that's, uh, that's why we're here. Okay, well, let's begin uh, with who got downgraded this week. Well, other than the U.S. government, which uh, obviously is the big one, uh, what's going on right now is that uh, companies who have spent uh, years maintaining the AAA rating, in one fell swoop, uh, the AAA rating for life insurers is uh, no more, at least with Standard & Poor's. Uh, Knights of Columbus, which is a very old uh, fraternal uh, insurance company, New York Life, uh, everyone knows uh, they've been very proud of their AAA rating for decades. Uh, Northwestern Mutual, another outstanding company. Uh, USAA and also uh, TIAA, which is Teachers Insurance and Annuity, uh, which is the, uh, again, uh, these are kind of the pantheon of insurance firms that are highly conservative. All of them in one day and one hour uh, downgraded to AA+. Mark, why were these companies suddenly downgraded? Well, uh, without getting into all the details of how Standard & Poor's does it, Scott, uh, the, the, the biggest issue is the fact that because they are so conservative and because they hold such quality assets, uh, in this particular case, and again, I think this is another overreaction by uh, Standard & Poor's, these companies are as safe today as they were a week ago, a year ago, two years ago. I mean, they weathered the worst financial meltdown uh, probably in U.S. history since the Depression. Uh, with AAA ratings, they went to enormous pains to hold uh, treasury debt and uh, high quality debt, but because of the percentage or proportion of the treasury debt that they hold, the fact that it was downgraded impacts them and you, you now have sort of this cascading effect uh, based on S&P's models and formulas. Mark, would it be safe to say that uh, there are more downgrades for other companies coming? Well, I think we have to assume that there will be, uh, and, and largely because how do you penalize these companies, in particular New York Life and Northwestern and, and the ones that are really active in the annuity market, uh, by taking away their AAA rating through virtually no fault of their own. Uh, and, you know, these, these managements, I can't stress to you enough, I mean, how hard these management uh, teams at these firms have worked to maintain this AAA rating. Uh, and if they get downgraded, you've got to assume the companies that are already AA plus or A plus, which again are outstanding uh, ratings, uh, I've got to imagine that they're going to be facing, uh, you know, probably similar review or at least the very, you know, I would think the very least will probably be moved to, uh, you know, a, a negative watch or something along those lines, uh, which is the precursor prior to a downgrade. Uh, finally, what's the impact on the structured settlement industry? Well, I've been saying for years, and again, unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, Scott, uh, I go uh, quite a ways back. I remember when uh, Standard & Poor's first came into the market, uh, it was a reaction to uh, the fact that AM Best, which had been the industry standard for decades, had, uh, in the eyes of some people, had been slow to downgrade uh, two, fun two prominent firms that collapsed in the 1980s, uh, Charter, uh, life insurance and Baldwin United. As a result of that, Standard & Poor's saw a market opportunity. Uh, the insurance company saw it as a marketing opportunity to be able to get this, uh, the coveted AAA rating. And with that AAA rating, uh, you know, it, it becomes a double-edged sword, uh, it, as we see this week. Uh, when you get that AAA rating, when you lose it, it becomes a huge marketing disadvantage and many times it's due to circumstances beyond the control of the company uh, as it is this week. So uh, it, for the structured settlement industry, I think the biggest thing that we have to do, and I've, I've been preaching this for years, is stop selling the ratings, stop putting this into statutory language on cases for minors and incompetence and uh, government cases and things of that nature. Uh, we have to begin to do field underwriting and individual company underwriting on these risks. So whether it's uh, companies that have been uh, sort of under the radar for a while, such as uh, uh, Symmetra and Liberty because they didn't have uh, an A-plus rating or a double A-plus rating or triple A rating. 
and again, I'm not, uh, I, those guys are probably, uh, you know, I mean, they're probably A, A credits or better. Excellent companies meeting all of their obligations have done extremely well through this uh, tumultuous time. Uh, you know, we, we've got to get away from this uh, over-reliance of using outside rating agencies to evaluate our companies and begin to do some internal and field underwriting uh, of matching the right company with the risk and becoming conversant about these issues and being able to explain them to our clients rather than just throwing a, uh, a credit rating at them. My guest has been Mark Wallstrom uh, with Wallstrom & Associates and host of Speaking of Settlements. Thank you, Mark. Scott, pleasure to be here. We'll uh, continue to uh, come back with additional updates on this. But the one thing that we really do want to stress with people is uh, this is not a cause for concern. Uh, it is an opportunity to uh, speak with your clients and to speak with people about exactly how safe these companies are, how well they are doing, and uh, matching up the right company for the right risk.